My dear friends, in the last video we have seen exponential growth and in this video I want to start with making a general explanation, a deeper understanding of this exponential change and change in general actually, uh, how do we model the change and so forth. And let's start with exponential change. In the last video, remember we said that the population at time t, pt, change in pt actually we said change in pt uh, is proportional proportional to what uh, the value of pt the value of pt the current value of pt we said and what was the corresponding uh, mathematical writing for each of these works, change in pt, we modeled it with dpt over dt is proportional to what k times the value of pt. It is pt. This was the differential equation and uh, we solved this differential equation and found that pt is actually the its initial value p sub 0 times e to the k times t. Actually, it doesn't matter if it is a growth or decay, exponential growth or exponential decay. In both cases, we obtain this formula. What actually changes is in exponential growth, we find k positive and in exponential decay, we find k negative. This is uh, the change. And if, of course, if k is equal to 0, e to the 0 is 1 and uh, we obtain a constant function. There is no change. So, let's show the gra their graph. If k is equal, to k is greater than 0, we start with an initial value here, p sub 0. And uh, an exponential growth is something like this. It, start, it grows exponentially. Why? Because uh, it's growth rate is always increasing and uh, at the initial times maybe uh, it doesn't grow uh, speed it, it, it doesn't grow fast but later times uh, it grows very fast and what about the decay case when there is an exponential decay we start somewhere here let's say and uh, decay is exponential decay it's reverse but be careful about that. E to the sum number is always positive. And when k is negative and uh, t goes to infinity, we approach zero. It follows that its graph is something like this. Like this. Or maybe uh, let's make a higher rate of decay at initial times. All right. Something like this. And the question is, how can we generalize these ideas? I mean, uh, how is the modeling the change in general? Well, in general, we say that we have a function y of x and uh, the value of y given the value of y when uh, a given value of x. So here uh, it's obvious that x is our independent variable. And uh, y is the dependent variable that depends on x, actually. And if we say here, let's try to write a gen general expression, uh, something like this. This is the value of pt we set here. It is uh, k times pt. This was our initial differential equation. But as well, we could say uh, the square of pt then it would be a square of k here. Or uh, the difference between pt and a thousand, let's say, we will try it like this. And the remaining would be similar. So the uh, change proportional to what this function actually determines the right hand side after k. And we can say that change of y with respect to x let's write it abbreviation with respect to x 
And again, we are going to say is proportional to what a general function, uh, a general function to a general function. Let's write it general function. And this function we will call what the left hand side is dy over dx is proportional to means is uh, k times a general function we are going to write here f uh, x y in general then this x y is understood uh, will be understood from this expression so this is how we model the change in general my dear friends and let's come to our question in this video. In the previous video, I have talked about exponential growth. And in this video, I will talk about exponential decay. And uh, it's an example from chemistry. Let's read it. The half-life of radium uh, 226 is 1590 uh, years. Actually, this radium 226 is the name of the element. We have nothing to do with 226 as a number. And uh, the half-life means it remains half of its initial value after 1590 years. And as we made previously, we can make uh, something, some, uh, some table like this. But before that, let's uh, write our function. Let's say it is y of t and it is value of the substance, remaining substance. At time t. And t is, uh, you know, a time and a non-negative number. And so let's write, write our table. Here we have time and uh, the value value of the substance. Let's let's di direct right value of substance y of t and time is t actually t time and uh, if you if you had space I, I I will going to write here value of y value of the substance but uh, it's not actually that much necessary and what are we given at time zero we will say. Uh, we have our initial value again y sub zero and after 1590 years its value becomes half of its initial value this is what the half-life means and what else uh, in part b we are asked to find the remaining mass after 2000 years and uh, remember how we write this at time 2000 it's a question mark actually this is the value uh, we are asked and and in part a uh, we are given the information that find the function that models the radioactive decay of a sample of a hundred gram and we understand here that uh, its initial value is a hundred gram but uh, it's it, it's it's not important to find the uh, to find the value of k as I will show now and so uh, let's gain some space here like this and we can start solving our question and if the substance decay okay let, let's uh, read the very important part the substance decays exponentially and uh, it is exponential decay you know or uh, it could we it could as well say the decay is proportional to its current amount. What does it mean? Uh, the decay, which is dy over dt, is proportional to its current amount. And having written this differential equation, separable differential equation, we come up with the function y of t is equal to y sub zero times e to the kt and uh, this is our function and in part a uh, we will find the we will find the function 
which means that uh, we we are gonna plug y plug a hundred plug in y zero is equal to a hundred, and then we will also find k using this information. This information actually specifically. All right, then let's find it. Uh, we are given the information that after 100, 1590 years, uh, which is when we plug in here, we obtain y0 times e to the k times uh, 1590. And this is the half-life. And this uh, 1590 is half-life, which means that it remains half of the initial substance. It is uh, y0 over 2, the yt, uh, after this much time. So let's solve this equation. You see, the initial substance uh, is not important here because they cancel out. And for the remaining part, I will take ln of both sides, e to the, let's change uh, the places of this k and time here and uh, 1 over 2 is we take ln of both sides it is uh, 150 and it is an, another uh, it is another way to solve the function in previous vi video i didn't take ln but uh, i directly found uh, the value of e to the k as well uh, you can also find k by taking ln of both sides so in the left hand side we have uh, this much time k is equal to uh, ln now okay let's let's write like this ln uh, one half and and when we divide both sides by uh, 1590 and here also 1 over 1590 and here we find k the value of k and I have uh, found it previously it is minus 0 over 0 0 0 4 uh, for what six nine something no, four three six all right and so our function appears to be yt is equal to y zero times uh, e to the minus zero over zero 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 four three six t and we are also given the information that y zero is a hundred Let's plug in y0 is 100 and maybe uh, we can mention it here y0 is equal to 100 in a box. All right, so we are done with part A and uh, but I didn't like it. Uh, let's put it somewhere here and uh, why because I want to highlight my result part A. Okay, this is part A. What about part B? Let's proceed and okay, let, let's make it with like this. All right, for change. And how much mass remains after 2000 years? Well, it, it's easy, right? Uh, we are gonna just plug in 2000 uh, T. Plug in T is equal to 2000. And it is zero over 0 0.00046. 436 value of k times 2000 and uh, when we calculate it it is i have calculated it before uh, for you it is 41.71 or let's make it point 71 and this is all let's also highlight this result my dear friends, I have one, one more question to solve for exponential change. And until that time, until for until my next video, take care of yourselves.